Hey everyone, I'm Alex Carter of Red Pill Props, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how I get my cool looking wood grain textures for foam props like what you see here. I'm going to be showing you several methods I use to get these awesome looks, and I'll walk you through the easy steps of doing it yourself. Now get your tools, follow along, and let's go make something cool. So to get things started off today, uh, with our first wood texture is going to be a simple uh, plank looking texture. Uh, it's a pretty common uh, sort of texture that you'll see used in props and whatnot to make them look like wood and it's uh, one that I use more often than not for most of the things that I make. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process uh, involving really just a, a sharp knife and a heat gun. Now to emphasize the, the importance of sharp uh, here. So I have these two other knives here and one of them is sharp and one of them is not. Um, this knife right here uh, looks like looks like the blade looks fine whatnot but you can see whenever you uh, put it to the foam this is me pushing pretty hard and cutting that's all that happened, right? It's not very sharp. This knife, on the other hand, cut through it with relative ease. So, uh, an important thing whenever you're working with foam is to get a knife sharpener. Uh, so, like whenever you do, uh, you can save your blades and also save a lot of money. Uh, you just give it a couple of passes through the sharpener. Now this is an old blade so I don't know if it's going to cut very well but eh, no. Now this blade's pretty much dead. But you can see it still cut better than it did before. So uh, that's uh, just want to make that note that having a knife sharpener and a sharp blade is important for doing foam work. So uh, for doing the plank texture we're going to start off by making our primary wood grain lines on the foam itself so you can uh, get those lines mapped out. Typically what I usually do, like you can see what I've done here for this, which we'll get to in a second, uh, is mapped out where my lines are going to go, where my main lines are going to go with uh, Sharpie. Uh, I started off doing, uh, doing the, the plank mapping out my lines but I've done it so many times and so often now that I can just kind of visualize where I want the lines to go um, so I don't really have to do all that much mapping uh, but if you're just starting off it really does kind of help to get that map down of where your lines are going to go uh, so uh, just to kind of start off uh, we'll make our first line kind of right here now when you cut you don't want to cut very deep. You want to just kind of break the surface of the foam. And as you're cutting, you kind of want to like move your knife back and forth ever so slightly, just a little bit. Because since this is an organic piece, uh, organic things aren't necessarily even or straight or perfect all the time. So throwing that in there kind of helps. Um, now, uh, spacing your lines apart, you don't need to make them evenly spaced all the, all the time. Uh, although I will say for trees, for simulating wood and whatnot, it uh, makes sense to have them uh, kind of evenly spaced sometimes. And then, like, depending on what on the look you're going for, like what style of wood grain, uh, you can start making the lines kind of uh, further apart to simulate uh, in like a, a year of, of thicker growth you know, like this now you see we got it's hard to see but the lines are kind of you know spaced further apart to simulate growth uh, some things I like to do are, is you'll see like this triangular shaped kind of uh, line that comes to a point sometimes whenever you have a plank and it'll just kind of 
have it come out like that and then you'll go back down and you'll have something that looks like that and then you're gonna make a smaller internal one just like this just like that now something I like to do to add a little bit of realism uh, to the wood even more is to go to the tops of these points and just kind of score score them a little bit just on the tips just like that and something else I like to do to add realism is I like to add uh, where knots or whatnot in the wood would have been and then so like right here and then I'll remove that with a triangle with a, uh, a v-shaped kind of triangular cut so now we have this piece of wood right here and on the back side I got that we'll hit it with our heat gun and as you can see there the lines opened up Look at that kind of cool looking uh, so I, I've seen it quite often that this is where a lot of people will just stop when they're making their wood grain uh, but I kind of go an extra further step with my wood uh, and what I do is I go back after I've hit it with a heat gun and get these primary lines opened up I'll go back with a knife uh, uh, doesn't mean it doesn't matter if it's a small or a uh, small blade or a thick blade like this it doesn't really matter and then I'll go back through and you see how in between these lines you have this nice really smooth flat surface well wood isn't exactly perfectly flat like that and so uh, what I like to do is I like to go back through and kind of lightly score the area of my wood uh, grain between the primary grain lines just like this and you'll see what you'll have start to happen is you'll get this surface texture broken up and you'll be able to feel that now what's important is that you don't score it uh, you don't actually you're not looking to cut hardly at all if at any into the surface of the foam you just want to kind of like score it because if you hit this with a heat gun they're not deep enough and so they won't open when you hit them let me see I cut a little bit deep on some spots and but you can see it's mostly kind of gone back to being flat and not uh, open so uh, there's that uh, but so if you want to keep the surface texture like this you need to not hit it with a heat gun again so after you open up your primary grain lines uh, just go back through and score this area and then leave it alone uh, then you're ready for sealing all right so that's the simple uh, plank kind of texture uh, the next one is going to be aged wood or like barn wood something that you see that's that uh, gray colored wood that you'll see in old barns and old structures out in the country and whatnot and this is actually even more simple than uh, making the plank texture where it's basically like making the plank texture where you're using lines but instead there's no uh, rhythm to them no nothing like that it's just kind of a bunch of lines and the surface of the foam and it when you do it you just kind of you make sure you cut deep you want to make them kind of overlapping and mixed up and mixed together now for this, you kind of want to hold the heat gun in, uh, on the foam for a longer period of time. That way you really get those lines to open up nice and wide. There you go. Now you see, this is really starting to look like an aged piece of wood. At least it would uh, with some paint thrown on there. But we'll go back through, hit some more areas. So the next step is going to be to take your knife and go back in here and kind of dig some pieces out
because this process is adding a bit of depth and dimensionality to the piece. Because as wood ages, you know, pieces are going to get uh, are going to come off and it's going to get damaged and worn and whatnot. So you want to really simulate that uh, to really sell the look. So go back and hit that with the heat gun again. Pull it open a little bit. And there we go. All right, so the next uh, texture is going to be a, a flat sheet of wood. I don't know what the technical name of it would be, but I'm just calling it flat sheet. And uh, for that particular texture, <laughs> knocked my stool over, uh, there's going to be some more planning involved. So for that, you might have seen it floating around. Uh, you're going to uh, draw some guidelines for us. Now this is kind of like the the uh, it's kind of a mix of the of the bar, of the barn wood look and of the plank look, but a little bit different subtly. So you can see where I've got my guidelines, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here. I'm going to score highly score these lines, but I'm not going to do it in long strokes like I was doing. At least not this time, not yet. So you see, you can see what it's starting to look like a little bit. Now it's going to do the same thing that I did for the uh, regular plank texture. I'm going to go back through and hit these areas between the lines uh, with my knife to score up the surface and make it not so smooth. But instead of actually cutting it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the the back edge of the blade so like the non this part right here and instead of cutting it I'm still gonna score it so really all this does is just leaves an indentation in the foam there you go now I know what you're thinking you're probably thinking wow that looks extremely tedious and just heartbreaking to do well I mean it, it is <laughs> Uh, but in my mind, it's it's worth it to really sell the look. So um, if you can find an easier way to go about doing all the scoring and whatnot, by all means, do that because I haven't yet. So um, <laughs> there's that. Um, all right, so the next style is going to be bark, uh, like, what, like what was on uh, my DayQ shield that you saw earlier. Now you can see with the bark, I have my lines right here mapped and planned out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a thinner blade knife and I'm going to channel cut or V cut all of these lines. And those, these lines will give me the base lines for my bark texture. So we'll go ahead and start in on that. All right, so you can see where the idea is going with this one, where it's at right now. So I have my primary uh, main lines cut and ready, and this will serve as the basis for my bark. Now, the next step involves a bit of dremel work, and what we're going to use is we're going to use this bristle bit right here. Uh, this is a one of the nylon bristle bits, uh, which is... Uh, because there's nylon, there's the nylon bristle bits, and there's also, excuse me, there's the steel bristle bits, and you want to use the nylon one because uh, for two reasons, the nylon is more uh, gentle on the foam, and the steel bristle bit one, the bristles will uh, fly off and hit you in the face, so you don't want that while you're working. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put this in our I can flex shaft 
And this is the process, uh, the next step. Now, the reason you want to use that bristle brush, or the nylon bristle brush, is because after you hit it with a heat gun, a lot of the roughed up surface texture goes away and seals again, whereas with if we used the, the steel bristle brush, uh, a lot of that wouldn't go away and we'd have a lot of residual texture left. But this gives us a nice, realistic looking uh, bark wood texture. All right. So the next bit and final uh, uh, piece of wood texture that I want to show you guys how to make is the carved wood texture, also like what you saw in my um, DayQ shield. Now for the carved wood texture, what we're going to use is the bullet-shaped bit again. Alright, now the, these are our deep cuts, and we'll probably make them deeper as we go along, but then the next step is to uh, rough up the whole surface, because what you want is you want to make this look like it was tooled uh, by a woodworking tool. So this gives us our main tool marks, which, like I said, we'll probably deepen. And then we'll go over the whole surface and break it up and make it look like uh, the tooled wood that we're going for. Kind of conveys the idea a little bit. So hit it with our heat gun. And there we go. Now, uh, you don't have to have quite this many tool marks if you don't want to. It's completely up to you what you're going for. Uh, but the you just want to give the idea that uh, this was rough tooled wood uh, that was incorporated in your piece. So, All right, guys. There it is. Another badly edited tutorial video for you to watch and for you to agonize over. Uh, I hope that you learned something new, and if you didn't learn anything new, maybe a subtle variation or different take on something that you already did when you make stuff. Um, I definitely want to see the stuff that you make if you use any of the techniques or whatnot that I showed you in this video. I definitely want to see what it is you make, so be sure to send me pictures of it and I'll take a look and give you all kinds of positive feedback because you're all beautiful and wonderful. And I love making stuff, and I love teaching people and showing people how to make stuff, so definitely hit me up with that stuff. Uh, if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see, uh, you can leave those in the comments below, and I'll try to make it happen. I don't really have a plan for what it is I want to uh, show you how to do next. Uh, maybe some sort of painting tutorial or another texturing tutorial I'm not entirely certain but if you have any suggestions be sure to let me know in the comments below um, do the whole like and subscribe thing uh, I'd be forever in your debt and uh, greatly appreciate it and hopefully uh, I'll get another video up here pretty soon so uh, but until then let's get out in the shop and make something cool Man, <laughs> really need a haircut. All right, guys. <coughs> Damn it. <laughs> and, your, and the stuff that... <sighs> guys, another... Ooh. And... Uh... And... you make and uh, in the future take 26 I definitely want to see nope not that part take on something that you already did and that you incorporate that in your and the stuff that